everyone, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. Today's video I'm going to be uh, sharing with you some tips on how to find a Cooper's Hawk nest. Now, uh, the Cooper's Hawk is an incredible species and one of my favorite species to fly. There's been a lot of interest, a few videos I've uh, mentioned them, people seem to have a big interest in this species. So in the coming months I will be producing more videos on Cooper's Hawks as a species and tips on how to train them and in the fall showing some Cooper's Hawks in action. But uh, because it is springtime I wanted to make sure that if you had need to find a Cooper's Hawk nest that you have information right now available to you because it is the proper time of year. So if you are a falconer or a biologist doing a biological survey or a bird bander, I hope these tips uh, are useful to you. Now, I don't want to give too much about Cooper's Hawks in this video because, again, I'll have more videos coming up. But um, what I, you need at least to have some understanding of the species if you're not familiar with them. Cooper's Hawks are sippiters, the forest hawks. They have short wings and a long tail. They're built for a flash and dash kind of hunt where they're hiding in trees and they dash out and grab something and then go back into cover. Very sneaky, fast, agile predators. They are smaller than a goshawk and they are larger than a sharp-shinned hawk. They're a beautiful species, incredibly common all throughout North America. Once you get further down into Central and South America, they get replaced by the Gundlatch's hawk. Gundlatch's hawk is just basically a tropical version of the Cooper's hawk. This is a highly versatile species, the Cooper's hawk, that is able to hunt anything from a sparrow all the way up to a duck and everything in between. And in my opinion, they are the best bird ever for hunting quail. When it comes to finding their nests, Cooper's hawks nest everywhere. Literally, they're all over the place. They're incredibly common, but they're secretive. It can be difficult to find them. You may have one nesting in a park in, in your neighborhood. You may have one nesting in your backyard and not even realize it. It happens. Uh, so here's the thing. Nature can be very chaotic, right? Animals doing whatever they want, nesting all over the place. I understand that. Um, but with a taxonomic mindset, what we do is we look at a chaotic world and we say, what patterns are there that we can define? Amongst all this chaos, can we define certain things and turn around and share that information in a useful way? So I'm going to share some tips with you today on how to find Cooper's Hawks in, in a forest. And, that, and again, you could have them in your backyard at total random. But I hope that these tips prove useful to you. So in this video, I've, I've taken two trips. One is like four or five years ago, and one was just the other day, to a canyon near my house to get some footage to show you the basics of how to find a Cooper's Hawk. And I have to, to laugh at this because even with my experience of finding Cooper's Hawk nests for years, and even knowing this pair and knowing every nest that they nest in, when I went to film the other day, the first nest I filmed, I got nothing there. Went the whole rest of the canyon, came back, and mom had returned and was in the very first nest that I had filmed. Uh, and apparently it was active and I hadn't known that. So Cooper's Hawks can be tricky, but they're a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoy seeing this. Now I also have to say I am from Utah which is mostly desert. We have high mountains, we have deserts, and so a lot of these tips, of course, are based off of my area, which is uh, maple and box elder forests uh, in amongst the deserts and the canyons, and these principles still apply all over, but they are, of course, very useful in the American West. So the first thing you need to stake out, if you're going in the early season especially, find water. The water, you don't want a raging river, you just want a little creek, something very small, almost a trickle. If you find this water source, even like a medium-sized creek or canal, usually you want to follow it upriver. You follow, this is called the riparian corridor. It's where you have hardwood trees lining the river, but then up past those uh, trees, you get into either desert or more mountainous trees. Follow those maples and those box elders and those hardwood trees along the river. Now, if you can see in this image, look up ahead and you can see on both sides, there's little mini side canyons that go to the left and the right. You want to find the one that's shadier. In this case, it's on the left, which is the south side facing north. It gets more water, it stays cooler in temperature, and look how there's those lines of maple trees that go up those tiny little mini canyons. You want to select one of those, 
Well, check each one of them, but when you get down in under this canopy in these mini side canyons, in the early season, the trees themselves have not fully leafed out. That's good, it makes it easier to spot a nest. And down below on the canopy floor, then there is fresh greens, little plants starting to sprout up that in another few weeks will turn into shrubs and bushes that make it quite difficult to explore this area. You're gonna find a lot of nests. They might be very frumpy looking such as this. That doesn't mean that's not the nest of the year. They will have many nests in the same canyon and the female will pick from year to year which nest site she wants to use. So you will find many nests that are not active. You have to find some like this one <laughs> was used year after year and I want you to see just how close it is to the major trail. Right there, it's a trail that has bikers and people walking and hiking every day. Now, all of the nests in this particular canyon are right near the trail, but again, more importantly, they're also right by a source of water. And again, take a look at this tiny creek. It's not much more than a trickle. This one is so small that by the end of the summer, it is completely dried out. It only consists of spring runoff. That's all they need. Now, if you follow these trails, you will see that not only are they well worn down, but hikers, mountain bikers, people walking their dogs, and uh, even people on horseback will not only go on the trail, but they'll trample near the trail. This is actually, it's bad for the forest, but it's good for the cooper's hawks. It reduces the amount of cover, so when a cooper's hawk is chasing their prey, they are more readily able to tackle it down without their prey going to cover. While I was up there on this day, there were tons of hikers and mountain bikers everywhere, and it didn't disturb the cooper's hawks at all. So even though they're secretive, doesn't mean that they can't handle being by people just fine. Now, also keep your eye out while you're on the trails and off to the sides for feathers plucked from prey. Cooper's hawks make a big mess when they catch a bird, and if you see a fresh plucked kill, it could be an indication that you are getting closer to a nest. When you come back in a few weeks when things have been uh, leafed out a little bit more, you've done your scouting work and you have found where old nest sites were. And you might even then have a chance to hear a cooper's hawk when you get close. All the greenery starts to fill up and bushes are filling the forest where you were getting through just fine before. Here's a nest from a few years ago that looked really frumpy and when I came back when the leaves were green, it turned out to be active that year. Getting a chance to hear the alarm call of a cooper's hawk might be a surprise because they don't always sit in the nest. When they hear you approach, they may leave, but if you're patient, they'll come back and make a sound for you to hear. Now, the general height of most of these western cooper's hawk's nests are from anywhere from 16 to 30 feet. This is probably 15 to 20 feet up the ground. Gives you an idea of the type of climb it takes to reach a cooper's hawk nest. Now, cooper's hawks can nest in regular parks in your neighborhood, but this is the natural version of the same thing. A mixed wood lot where you have some hardwood trees lining a river or lining a trail next to open meadows. This is the perfect place for these birds to hunt. So this is the type of area you're looking for, is the nature version of a traditional park. Here's this year's nest. And this is the one I referenced earlier that I, uh, I filmed the empty nest, went through the whole rest of the canyon, and on my way back, she had returned, and there she was looking beautiful, being a wonderful mother, laying on her eggs. And the amazing thing is just how close this nest actually is to the trail. And in my time up the canyon, Hundreds of people walked past this nest or rode their bikes and had no idea they were going past such an amazing bird of prey. Well, I hope some of these tips are helpful for you. Cooper's hawks are everywhere. They are not too difficult to find, but uh, this was just meant to be a short, brief introduction on how to find them. If you have questions on details, uh, let me know in the comments down below and I will help the best I can. I will have many more videos on Cooper's hawks coming in the upcoming months, so be watching for those. And uh, thank you for watching my YouTube channel and as always, happy hawking.